As the coronavirus crisis claims hundreds of thousands of lives around the world, scientists are re-examining their research efforts and how their work could focus on solving the coronavirus crisis. A new article in The Atlantic details how researchers rallied together for science to combat the virus and what the scientific community lost when the pandemic upended all their other research efforts. I want to bring in the author of that article, Ed Young. He is a staff writer for The Atlantic who covers science. Ed, welcome. Great to have you with us. So you cite how this worldwide crisis has captured scientists' attention so much that thousands of them pivoted their research efforts to focus on COVID-19. How much innovation has this prompted in the medical community? Um, it's been huge. Obviously, the vaccines are the most uh, the the most prominent example of the products of this research. Um, to have two very effective vaccines against a virus that a year ago we did not know about is truly extraordinary. That's just the the tip of the iceberg. We know so much about this virus, more so than any other uh, pathogen in so short a time. We can we uh, have sequenced its genome hundreds of thousands of times over. We can de reconstruct its shape down to the detail of individual atoms. It's astonishing how much we know about this, and I think that will help us not only uh, fight the current pandemic, but it will give us clues about how other viruses and other diseases uh, behave that will leave us better suited to deal with other emerging threats in the future. And Ed, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are the first vaccines to use what is called messenger RNA technology. Um, how does mRNA work and can it be a game changer for vaccines going forward? And also, I'd like to just point out that it's fascinating that these two vaccines that were being worked on separately in some ways, uh, you know, use very similar science, which is sort of reassuring that, you know, the great scientific minds are sort of all on the same track or at least uh, somewhat, uh, you know, on similar tracks. Yeah, so um, mRNA it's, is a, a sliver of the genetic material of the virus. Um, the vaccines push, um, inject that genetic material into your body. Your body uses that to reconstruct a small non-infectious fragment of the full virus. And your immune system can then look at that to prepare defenses ahead of time. And this is different to uh, other traditional vaccines which use uh, a dead virus or a fragmented or weakened virus. By using mRNA, we have the ability to hopefully construct new vaccines against new diseases much more quickly than we ever have been able to before. And the success of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines validates that approach, which had been just developed for many, many years before COVID-19 came along, but which, but which had never actually brought a vaccine to market. Thanks to that long history of pre-existing research and the fruits of this year, we should now be theoretically in a better position to develop vaccines against other new diseases in the future. And that's a very good place to be in. That is certainly encouraging news. Ed, how has the scientific community's pivot, though, to COVID-19 exposed flaws in scientific enterprise? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, Firstly, some things have just been lost. Um, science is in many ways a zero-sum game. So if you have a ton of people shifting their attention to COVID-19, that attention is not being paid to things like tuberculosis, cancer, other diseases that are still very important. A lot of the people who shifted did so out of altruism, a desire to help. But some did so out of opportunism, a desire to gain extra prestige because of all the focus paid on this disease. A lot of sloppy work emerged as a result that made things muddier rather than more clarified, that hindered rather than helped. And I think finally, it, the push for vaccines and drugs above all else highlights how much um, the biomedical community focuses on these silver bullets instead of fix, instead of doing similar work on all the things that actually matter for epidemic control, like masks, um, physical distancing, trust in communities, um, uh, trust in government and, and in politics. That social side to medicine, along with the inequities we've seen this year, used to be much more appreciated. And we sort of lost sight of that, fixating instead 
on the biomedical aspect to really prepare for future pandemics. We need both of those to work together. Lots of lessons learned. Ed Young of The Atlantic, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.